Eloquist versus Warfarin in the Prevention of Stroke and Systemic Embolism in Nonvalvular Atrial Fibrillation. Now, both of these medications are anticoagulants or blood thinners. And what they're used to do is to prevent blood clots. And what a blood clot is, is when you cut yourself, for example, a blood clot forms. And this is used to create a barrier to prevent further bleeding. It's a scab, right? Now, that's how it normally works. But what can happen in some situations is that these blood clots or scabs can actually form within the blood vessels. And when that happens, a barrier forms, similar to a scab, right? A barrier forms and it does not allow the passage of nutrients and oxygen, and basically what it does is it kills whatever's on the other side. So what these medications are, do, are designed to do is to prevent that from happening. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about the mechanisms of action, because that'll be very helpful, and then we'll have a look at what the benefits of each one of these drugs are. Warfarin is a vitamin K antagonist. Warfarin works by disrupting the vitamin K cycle, and the vitamin K cycle converts oxidized vitamin K to reduce vitamin K. And there is an enzyme in the middle that converts this oxidized vitamin K to reduce vitamin K. And that enzyme is where warfarin's mechanism of action is. It stops this conversion. And the reason that this is significant is because reduced vitamin K is a critical component of the synthesis of certain coagulation factors in the liver. Those coagulation factors being 2, 7, 9, and 10. So what happens is that warfarin disrupts this vitamin K. The vitamin K is necessary for the completion of these coagulation factors. So what happens is the liver continues to produce these coagulation factors, but without the vitamin K, they're constructed in a way where they're not active. So the way that warfarin works is it disrupts these coagulation factors that are important in the coagulation cascade. So without these fully functioning coagulation factors, the cascade for coagulation, the signaling, only goes so far and it stops. So you don't fully coagulate as normal. That's the way that warfarin works. So a good analogy for this would be that of a car factory, right? Where the cars are the coagulation factors. What warfarin does basically is that it disrupts a critical component from being shipped to a car factory. So the car factory continues to produce cars, but without this critical component, all the cars that are made don't work properly. They're inactive. So it would be like if a car factory made a car, but it never got the shipment for a spark plug, right? So if you have a car and it doesn't have a spark plug, it can never turn on. So therefore, it's an inactive car. Eloquis works by directly inhibiting coagulation factor 10. To compare that to warfarin, warfarin works by inhibiting coagulation factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. And it does this by disrupting the vitamin K cycle. It has since, however, been discovered that to get approximately the same anticoagulation effects as warfarin, it's not necessary to inhibit all of the coagulation factors. In fact, if you just inhibit coagulation factor 10, it gets approximately the same results. So the idea here is to make more targeted therapy. Now, going back to our car factory example, let's say our car factory produces four cars. Car 2, car 7, car 9, and car 10, right? Warfarin works by disrupting the shipment of a critical component to our factory, which thereby causes all of our cars leaving our factory to be non-functional, right? They're missing the spark plug, they don't turn on. And that gets the results we're looking for, but if all we're trying to do is shut down the production of one car, we've unnecessarily shut down the production of three other cars, right? So the way Eloquist works is that it doesn't interfere with the production of cars, all the cars roll off the assembly line fully functional. What it does basically is that it waits outside the factory and it waits for one particular car, car 10 in this case, to come by and then it puts a boot on it so it stops it from going anywhere. It makes it non-functional, right? So this is basically what the innovation is here. What it, Eloquist does is that it inhibits the coagulation but it does it without interfering with the vitamin K cycle and also without affecting the other coagulation factors. Now we'll talk about the benefits of each one of these medications. And we'll begin with Eliquis. The first major advantage to Eliquis is that in clinical trials of Eliquis versus Warfarin, Eliquis was shown to have a lower overall rate of stroke and systemic embolisms than Warfarin. And this is significant because the whole point of taking these anticoagulant medications is to lower the amount of blood clotting which reduces the chance of a stroke or a systemic embolism. The second major advantage is also in clinical trials of Eloquist versus Warfarin, Eloquist was shown to have a lower rate of major bleeds as compared to Warfarin. 
And this is significant because the main drawback of anticoagulant medications is that they stop the blood clotting. So if you cut yourself, it will take a longer amount of time for that bleeding to stop. Thirdly, Eloquist had a lower all-cause mortality rate as compared to warfarin in clinical trials, which backs up the first two pieces of data, having lower all incidence of stroke and embolism, and having lower rate of major bleeding. Fourthly, regular INR testing is not required on Eloquis. This is because the drug behaves much more predictably than warfarin. And lastly, there are significantly fewer medication interactions and diet interactions on Eloquis than as compared to warfarin. Warfarin is notorious for having a lot of medication and diet interactions, which is partially the reason why compulsive INR testing is required on warfarin. Someone may change their diet slightly, and as a result, their INR can either lower and put them at risk for stroke, or it might rise and put them at risk for major bleeding. The main advantage of warfarin is that it is a tremendously well-studied and understood drug. Hundreds of millions of people have taken it, generations of people have taken it. People's grandparents have taken it, their parents have taken it, and now they're taking it. And as a result, almost every healthcare professional is going to know warfarin very well. They all learn about it in school, and it's such a common drug that they have to understand how it interacts with the medications, their procedures, their whatever service they're offering there. Whereas with a newer drug, it, um, a lot of healthcare professionals may have not even learned about it in school, or if they don't prescribe it and someone shows up and they're on the drug, well, that makes it more complicated, right? And also, most of the information that we have on the newer drugs come from the drug's clinical trials. And while the information might be very thorough and very good, it's done in a very narrow range of people, right? At Eloquis, it would have been done in people with only non-valvular atrial fibrillation. And that's the way it's supposed to be, right? Because if you start including people with other disease states in your clinical trial, if they die or have negative effects because of that underlying disease state that is not what they're trying to treat, the blood clots, then it will mess up your data, right? More people will be dead or more people will have adverse reactions and it skews the data. So you're supposed to exclude those people. But as a result, if you have one of those conditions, they might not necessarily know that well how it works. Whereas with warfarin, since it's been around for so many years and so many people have taken it, everyone understands how it works in their particular disease state and their particular practice. Warfarin also has an antidote. Since warfarin works by blocking vitamin K, the effects of warfarin can be reversed by simply adding vitamin K, where Eliquis does not have a reversing agent. Lastly is the price. Warfarin is one of the most widely produced drugs in the world, and as a result, it's very inexpensive and widely available. Even if you wash up on the most remote and poorest country in the world, I will guarantee you they probably have warfarin. Whereas some of the newer drugs, the opposite is true, where they are likely to be very expensive and not as widely available. I hope that gave you a good understanding of the differences and the benefits of these two drugs. Might there be more benefits to Eliquis? Sure, absolutely. Just looking at the mechanism of action, we can see that since Eliquis is so much more direct acting than warfarin, or warfarin inhibits the vitamin K cycle and blocks some other coagulation factors that Eliquis does not, it might be reasonable to think that Eliquis would have less side effects. But, and also, I guess as well, warfarin is implicated, is being implicated in a lot of things like osteoporosis, and it's thought to be a result of low levels of vitamin K. Well, since, since Eliquis does not block vitamin K, it likely would not have those effects. But still, Eliquis is, is, is still a very new drug, and only time will tell whether it will be significantly better than warfarin or not. So I'll definitely keep an eye on it. If there are any updates, I'll certainly put a link in the side or uh, make a new video about it, okay? So if you have any other questions, you know, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you around next time.